and Sid show. Guaranteed to be enormously successful. It's about truth, the damn truth. New York's truth, the truth behind the BS. For New York, nothing at all in between. This is Bernard McGurk. Bernard McGurk. So Bernie. This is Sid Rosenberg. The one and only Sid. Live, local, on it. You never know what's going to happen. Exclusively. What is this? 77 WABC. Woo! And you know, it's hard to get a big crowd after an election. If somebody else, a normal person, came after an election, even after a victory, you'd have 15 people. People would say, we had enough, we're not going. And this place is packed. Whether you are African American, Hispanic American, or Asian American, or whatever the hell you are, remember that we are all Americans. And we are all united by one shared We are all Americans. We are all united. We are all here on the Bernie and Sid show on a getaway Friday here on 77 W ABC. Donald Trump last night, part of the victory thank you tour in Hershey, Pennsylvania, one of our great vacation spots in the United States. And he's having a pretty good time. Hopping on. He is enjoying himself. (laughs) He's he's back in campaign mode. Yes. Clearly, uh, does he know he won? Does yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. he's celebrating. Okay, he's celebrating, and he's he's showing his gratitude and appreciation. I know it's unprecedented. Well, but. you and I can argue all day about showing his gratitude, and I mean, I just think he's showing off, and it's great for his ego when he's stroking himself. And I don't find him to be very he, gracious, but it doesn't matter. And not surprising if you right. if you weren't a fan to begin with. It's not going to uh, appeal to you. Well, because I, uh, as I've said a million times since the election, I want him to fare well. I'm rooting for him. I really true, am. I'm true. not saying that, you know, but I don't find him to be a very gracious or I don't buy any of that. I, 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 I just don't. But that's fine. But, yeah, now he said he wouldn't prosecute Hillary. That he, was very he, nice. He said he said yeah. he's... If, which I, which if, I said he would do all along, by the way. And effusive in his praise of Obama and their communications. Mm, that's and, kind of over now. He's kind of going back the other way. But he, but, but he was... He well, was, when you first so meet that, him, that's gracious. When that, you that first grace. when you first meet him and you're nice to him, I know guys like Donald Trump. I know I'm like him. Uh, and you meet him and you're nice to him, then he's going to be nice to you. But as the days go by and he has a chance to kind of sit around and think again, and he kind of forgets about the last time he met, it went pretty well, then uh, it can go either way. Well, I think it's in this case, uh, it's more the the now the whining. About the, excuse me, the incessant whining about the Russian hacking. First it was the Jim Comey letter. Now it's the Russian hacking. And it's, and then Obama jumps in and he's like, even though they knew about all this uh, last summer, now all of a sudden we have to get it, we'll have to get an investigation going. All, all of a sudden, immediately, right now, we have to do it right now be, before the electors uh, meet, Monday. the Electoral College meets on Monday. We have yeah. to get this thing going. We have to taint uh, the Trump candidacy uh the trump actually the trump administration before it gets uh, in gear to sort of uh, slow him down and so he doesn't come out bold and aggressive with his agenda i mean that's obviously the it's not it's not going to work right but that's why now you see a souring because josh Ernest, the, the white house press spokesperson if he's coming out and he's trashing trump he's doing that with the blessing of barack obama right and which he's tr- done the trump's whole no, way and trump is no idiot he knows that right let's so, not forget Ernest also crushed donald trump after the carrier deal. Didn't just start with this. The carrier deal, he said, oh, that's good. Now he's got about 800,000, 80,000 more to go to reach what Barack Obama did. Remember that? I do. So Ernest has not been very... No, um, and, um, and it's all coming from Good to Trump at all, right. The, 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 those guys are just mouthpieces. They don't uh, initiate a policy. And you had uh, Obama last fall. He was talking about how elections couldn't be possibly be rigged. And, right. And if you... You know, after uh, uh, Trump said he might not accept the re- he, he he said that I will reserve judgment before I tell you whether or not I accept the results of the election, and they they freaked out. Right? They freaked out. In fact, we have to. We just have to. What do we have to? Do? We have to listen to what Obama said. Okay. And 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 the way he's changed his tune now, but uh, <laughs> but 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 this is what he said last October. The larger point that I I, I want to emphasize here is that there is no serious person out there who would suggest somehow that you could even rig America's elections. And so uh, I'd advise Mr. Trump to stop whining and go try to make his case to get votes. 
That was pretty snotty. But, uh, again, uh, Trump let it slide, and he was being very gracious. No, he didn't let it to slide. He, he let it all slide after he, after he won the election. After he won, yes. And, of course, and then, Obama said all that, Obama, figuring that Hillary Clinton was going to win anyway. So, and, and then they were gracious initially, Hillary, both Hillary and Obama, and then they stewed about it for a while. And now it's like, first, then it, was, first it was the Comey letter, and now it's uh, the Russian hacking thing, which yeah. it's not going to go anywhere. I, know, I, I don't know what the point is. I don't either. I don't know what the point of the uh, the women's march the day well, after the inauguration is either. I, I what, guess, it's not like you're going to oust him from his seat. No, I guess the whole I, I, the point is really to undermine and, as people have been saying, using the, this word ad nauseum, delegitimize. Oh, but that that is the point. But uh, what about the peaceful transition of uh, power in this country and uh, accepting the results and 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 wishing the new can the, the new president well no, no, for the no. good of the country? There was no way. By the way, a quick shout-out to my, my dear, dear friend, Tommy Donato, listening right now in Coral Springs, Florida, as hey, he does yo, Tommy, what's up? each and every day. All those guys down there, they're all great. And they listen every day on the free WABC app. We've got a huge Florida audience. Uh, there was no way, the way the election went down, and the vitriol and uh, the, the, the genuine ugliness between, not, not the candidates, I'm talking about the voters, the supporters of each candidate, there was no way, realistically, you were going to have a peaceful transition. There is nothing happening right now that's surprising me. It nauseates me. It's disappointing. You would hope eventually that grown-ups would be grown-ups and figure out, hey, he won fair and square, let's move on. But nothing is surprising me because they hated the other candidate. They hated them. It wasn't like, well, I'd like to see... Hillary win, but oh, they hated Trump and vice versa. Yeah, and vice versa. But 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 still, okay. You know, that, there's that, no but that, still. Everybody there's hates this trash talk before uh, any, a boxing match. No, nah, this is uh, different. This is different. This was the most animosity. I talked about this with sports. You can give me Red Sox, Yankees, Celtics, Lakers, Bears, Packers, and Giants, Cowboys. But at the end of the game, they all shake hands and they go for dinner if they're in the same city that night. This was genuine animosity you like you'll never see any place else did you happen to see that video that uh they put out with martin sheen and uh the guy from mash the old guy from mash alan older no farrell mike farrell oh, okay and a bunch of other people uh, I, I didn't see it no. so you, you, you in other words uh you have charlie sheen's father and you have a hot lips houlihan martin sheen yeah martin sheen who played who did a good job playing a president mind you in the west wing he's a dinosaur He's a relic. The oh, he, must have, he must have said something bad about Trump. Okay, well, they, they're all trying to influence these electors on Monday. Oh. Uh, they put out an actual uh, uh, videotape uh, urging, exhorting the uh, electors to vote their conscience and don't vote mm. for Donald Trump. But it's, I mean, the, the, celebrity, uh, <laughs> the celebrity opinions work very well during the election. So no, let, great. Let's trot out some more. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's, that's the mentality. That's the genius of these people. But uh, they're, they're annoying. I, I agree you, with you. You know what they're like? You know, you know what they're like? They're like the old uh, Japanese soldiers that were found on the Pacific Islands in the 1950s, mm -hmm. still fighting World War II. Right. Even though it was over. Like, the war uh, was over. Right. Seven, eight years before. Sure. That's what these idiots are doing. Or like the guy that uh, still shows up at the Grateful Dead concert 40 years later. Doesn't realize Jerry Garcia is dead. Is it that guy? <laughs> still thinks he's... Yeah. A, I, I, I'll go with that. Still thinks he's in Bethel in 1969. I'll go with that. That works. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, but this video with uh, specifically with uh, Charlie Sheen's father and uh, yeah, Mike man. Farrell and uh, Hot Lips Houlihan from well, MASH, see, it Mark looked like a freaking adult diaper commercial. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear you. Marty Sheen, um, I don't understand how he allows his kid to change the name. That, that, see, how do you have a Martin Sheen, a Charlie Sheen... And then an Emilio Westervez. Now, the truth is, Emilio didn't change his name. No, no. The right. other two guys That's did. That's right. Right. They, so. they're, actual, uh, they're actually Mexicans. They're That's Mexi right. Mexican-Americans. So there's no way they're going to like Donald Trump. And then they go with... He uh, hates the Mexicans. They go with a nice Irish name, a Martin Sheen. What? Marty Sheen. <laughs> Marty Sheen. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, but maybe he has some Irish in him or something. But, uh, I don't know. I have no idea. I actually like him. I think he's a pretty good actor, but... Yeah, he was good. He was yeah. all right. But he's, uh, he's clearly, you know. It's over? It's way over. It's been over. I mean, with, nobody wants to hear from uh, Hollywood elite celebrities. They, don't, they, they don't, don't get the whole point of the election, which was it was middle It was working class people. Of, uh, uh, you know, Hillary was the, uh, the, the elite left coast, yeah. uh, right coast, left coast uh, candidate. She, yeah. was, she was the candidate of these people. That's right. And they right. were thoroughly rejected because of that. That's exactly right. And for them to come out and remind people, 
it, 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 it's, 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 it's pointless. It's, it's Sisyphean, uh, k- h- h- Sydney. Nice word. It is, uh, <laughs> it is quixotic, if you will, yeah. uh, Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just stupid. I'm just sick of it. I hate yeah. it. But look, it's a Friday. It's a festive Friday. They're not going to ruin it for you. No, yeah, I'm not a happy guy. No, we got a great show today. Larry Lawton, who was on my show in Florida many, many times. At one point, he stole more jewelry for the Gambino crime family than any jewelry heist uh, guy ever did. Wait I mean, so, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about millions and millions. But he went away. Okay. And he got out of prison, and now he has started this, uh, this, uh, this kids deal. He takes, care of, he takes uh, troubled kids, puts them in a program around the country that gets so much attention. He's on the Today Show all the time. He's on the CBS Early Show all the time. So he's gone the other way. He went from a life of crime to now helping kids who may be facing a life of crime. How do we know he's not still connected? We have no idea. We hope he is. In other words, we have to be very, very nice to him and very yeah, careful. He's because got a, he, there's always the chance. Always. He's got a new book right? out. It's you feel called, that way uh, when you talk to him? 100%. His, his <laughs> book is called Gangster Redemption. Peter Golenbeck wrote it with him. So he'll be in here in the, 11, in the 10 o'clock hour, live in studio. And then the great Holly Holm will be on next hour. Holly Holm, who knocked out Ronda Rousey, the, the big bad Ronda Rousey, who could, who couldn't be defeated. Holly Holm knocked her out. She was at the top knocked of the world back then. With a kick yeah. to, the, to the mush and really hurt her. And Rousey and back then. Hurt her physically and psychologically. Yeah, because I wasn't an MMA fan or a follow like I do now with you. But, you know, back then Rousey was on you know, late night TV and she was a huge, she transcended uh, the sport. Uh, uh, and, and since she got knocked out, you, she, there were commercials because it was all in the, in the works. Uh, endorsements, commercials, movie parts. Gone. Not think, no. Actually, they had to follow through on it contractually. Okay. But uh, they were all, uh, the, the air was taken out of the uh, yeah. the, the whole thing when, when, when uh, Holly Holm knocked her out with that kick to the head. It's l- sort of like w- at the U.S. Open when uh, you have, they, they think the favorite is going to win. Who's right. A, who's a great example? Uh, they, well, Serena usually wins, but yeah, she but did th- lose there, there two years ago. There was one guy who was, a, who was a big favorite out there. What the hell is his Well, name? there's four of them. There's Nadal. There's Federer. Yeah. There's Djokovic. Nah, there's one guy, but he lost. Andy Murray? He kept losing. How before, many years ago? He, like, would lose in the first round. And oh, you see his picture plastered all over Flushing <laughs> in the U.S. <laughs> Open. He's in the commercials. Yeah. I, I, I have to look his name Andy up. Roddick? Andy Roddick. Oh, Andy Very Roddick. Good. Ding, 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 ding. Matt right. Meany from downtown Andy. sitting in for Flirty Flipper. Andy, That's right. That? You would see him. He would be plastered all over the he place. He never won. Showing up in the commercial. And he's out in the first round. Never and then won. By, by the second week, you're like, why do they keep putting uh, Andy Roddick yeah. in these commercials? By the because time he finished his career, his wife, Brooklyn Decker, was more famous than him, yes. basically. But so, you're right. It's kind of like that, right? That was the, the yeah. Ronda Rousey. So anyway, Holly Holm she, is going to be she, with she us. She thought about killing herself and all that, right? Ronda Rousey? Yes, like I said, she was, she was not only uh, uh, injured physically, but psychologically. Wow. Uh, she, was, she was really hurt. And it, I mean, just <laughs> everything went wrong. And so she, Ronda Rousey's going to fight December 30th. Oh, she is? The night before New Year's Eve. And now Holly Holm, who lost herself subsequently... Instead of waiting for a rematch with Ronda Rousey, she took a fight early on because she didn't want to wait for Ronda to recover because she said, like, I, oh, I'm a fighter. That's what I want to do. Well, she ended up losing. I know that. And that kind of screwed her up a little. Yeah. So she's back, and she's fighting in a new weight class, 140, wow. 145 pounds, this girl. How is. about that? And she's a beautiful girl. Yeah. But uh, she's, she's going to fight. And she'll talk to us a little bit about that. Very exciting. Time. And plus, it's, it's like you said, it's the weekend. It's Christmas. Yeah, man. Most people are down to the last couple of working days before the long holiday. The, the, and the, These are the good things. If, these are right. the good If times. you're not in a good mood today, you're basically right. a miserable son you of a what? bitch. Take to Hurl yourself off a roof. That's because, it. Uh, Do we, us we all a wanna, favor. We, we don't want to hear it. Right. Like I used to say, just put, rev that thing up to like 95 and look for the nearest <laughs> wall. 1-800-848-9222. Bernie and Sid back after this. It's Christmas. Baby, please come home. Yeah! The snow's coming down. I'm watching it fall. Lots of people around. Baby, please come home. The church bells in town. Back here on the Bernie and Sid show on 77 WABC. Who is that, Sid? This is you, too. It's my favorite Christmas. Uh, Here's my favorite part right here. My my Irish brothers. Oh, 
So, years ago, Bernard, I think when we worked together back on Imus, they did this album, you know, and all the artists remade old Christmas songs. Like, you remember when Madonna did um, Hey Santa Cutie, and they're all old Christmas songs that the new artists did, which I realized, but I didn't realize this was an old song. I just thought you two did it. I thought stupid I am. So anyway, Imus finds all this stuff, and he actually played the original version of this song on the Imus show with us earlier this week. Right. And I was like, wow, that... You two didn't write that? <laughs> you know, you, you taught the young kids, hey, they, they hear a song in a movie, they go, hey, that was from uh, Ace Ventura. It's like, no, you no, moron. It was right, written 20 years right. <laughs> It's like, like with movies. Uh, yeah. You, you, who was the Rascal Flats made? Uh, they, they recorded a song from, from, uh, from something from the se- early 80s or whatever. You thought it was like, oh, that was a great song. But yeah. they, they did it lock, stock, and barrel, just like the original artist. Right. Right. I mean, they didn't improve on it at all. But if you didn't know any better, you think so? You'd like, well, these guys are geniuses. Well, they, they imp- I, I think the YouTube version is better. Well, Plus, I, they're Irish, so. I, listen, I have nothing bad to say about uh, Bono except when he campaigns for Hillary Clinton. Mind your business. Did he do shut that? your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to hear that from you. And by the way, speaking of Christmas, oh, I will funny. just say I hate to, uh, yeah. you know, politicize, but Christmas is coming a little early. Front page of the New York Post. Yeah. Grand juries probe blahs. They are convening grand juries. Isn't this beautiful? Yes, this is fantastic. Beautiful. This is this is Christmas. This is pornography as well. It, is, it really is. He, and they they find him actually personally forty seven thousand bucks. That's great. And the dude may end up uh, doing time. Bo Deedle on page six of the New York Post also uh, got in his mush. Got right? in his mush at some function. I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. Yeah. And also uh, he was the guy too. He was uh, blaming Donald Trump for that hate crime hoax, yes, remember? Yeah, yes. He was essentially uh, ass clown Al Sharpton to that girl who was like Tawana Brawley. Tawana Brawley, right. Exactly. So he's no exactly. better than ass clown Al Sharpton. Well, of course he's not. She was no better than Tawana Brawley. Right. And now he's going to prison. That's Christmas time, well, baby. I, I hope he's going to prison because my fear is, like I told you yesterday, no disrespect to Bo, who I will vote for, love him dearly. Um, if I'm going to be completely honest, now I was wrong about Hillary, so I could be wrong again. But to be completely honest, right now, when I look at the landscape, he may win again. I know it sounds nuts because we hate him and he, he, he's just an awful mayor and a, and a bad guy. Oh, well, but he may yeah. win again. All right. Well, let's not introduce. Can negative, Trump help us with let's this? Let's not introduce negative thoughts right now. Well, can now. Trump help us with this? Maybe. All right. one 800 Larry Lawton. Former uh, Gambino crime family member turned motivational speaker. Turned good. He's an all around good guy. Great yes. guy. Honorary police officer. Yes. And just a, a, a funny guy as well. Yes. We'll be here with Bernie and Sid after knowing with the news. Get to Bernie and Sid now. 800 848 WABC. Where New York comes to talk. 77 WABC. I don't think anyone here plans to go to prison. Do you think Bernie Madoff planned to go to prison? Being ethical is not something that you learn from signing a piece of paper. You know, I'm going to tell you something I learned in prison. You got seven extra inches in your anal canal to hide some. Let me ask you, you think you know what prison's all about? You better go to the shower with your boots on. You if you do. f- don't and you don't go with your friends, they're going to come and shank your ass. You like that? That's f- what's really going to get in the shower? You Shut up, f- Miss Dalfire. Yeah. That's great, Larry Lawton explaining. You had to see the anchor's face. You almost died. You can hang, actually hide stuff in your ass. Uh, Larry, I got <laughs> the greatest, the greatest news segment ever. Uh, I got to know Larry last year down in Florida. He's an amazing guy. Led a life of crime for a long time and was really good at it. Jewelry heist, Gambino family, as good as it got. I uh, went away for a long time, and when he came out, just in case you don't believe in rehabilitation, when he came out, all he's done is helping out kids all over the country. He's got a monster program. He's on the Today Show all the time, the early show. And I'm saying this uh, from the heart. He's one of the nicest and most genuine people you'll ever meet. And he's live in studio right now with me and Bernard. It's our friend Larry Lawton. How are you, pal? Hey, Larry. Well, well Bernie said thank you very much, guys, for having hey, me first up of here. all, uh, you, you're a local guy. You, you, you were born and raised in the Bronx. I'm just a couple of years older than you, and I was born and raised in the Bronx. Uh, you went to Lehman High School. You know, I went to Lehman High School, uh, didn't graduate, a little rough times during the early times. <laughs> right, right. Went in the service at 17 years old. When I got out of the service, I mean, when I, even in the service, I was messing with the guys in the mob. I mean, I ended up uh, sending stuff, hot stuff, out of the, out of the military because sure. I'd become a bosun mate, sending it back to the bar in Brooklyn. And when I got out in 86, it was great because I went to Brooklyn. 
And when I went to Brooklyn, in Brooklyn, I really became, I was a little tough guy for a card game and illegal thing out in Queens. So I was muscling for that or protection for that, helping them do that. Were you a bookmaker? Were you bookmaking yeah. back then? All I that even too? bookmake behind the stick taking, I was just taking the small bets, nickels and dimes, right. which your, obviously your audience knows is $500 right. to $1,000 bets. But the guy I worked for was this Jewish guy named Mac. He was the biggest bookie mm. in New York. He used to take all the layoff action. All the bookies in New York used to do the layoff action because with bookmaking, they want to have it. Right. In other words, 100000 in this game, 100000 in this game. When they get 150000 on one game, what do they do with the 50000 If they keep it, they're gambling. Right. So they lay it off to a guy like Mac. And Mac was the biggest bookie in New York actually taking the bigger. He taught me the game. And. I ask a guy who's a bookie, he says, do you know what a nickel line is? If you don't know what a nickel line is, the guy's not a real bookie. That's funny. You know? But right. I really came so, up here for two reasons, too. Obviously, my grandkid. Right. I have a new grandkid, which I'm so excited about. Out in Brooklyn? It, my son is in Bensonhurst, though, at Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, right. up in near Diker. And by Polly Prep. Well, you yeah. did a lot of your damage, by the way. Right? I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a great show. And I also come up to break some guy's legs. There's a guy named, <laughs> hey. Hey, there's a guy named Italiano, right? Not like like par- a not- tough night name, Italiano. Yeah. And, and he's talking some stuff, you know, and, and he's messing with a friend of mine, Johnny is, is Ballone. That is that true? Yeah, now, well, he's messing with me. He knows right. I'm going to mess with him back. Right. And I said, I'm going to come up here and put an iron on your chest. <laughs> you know, I did that in a book, Bernie. You're going to have to read that, Puck. I, I, I'm not I, proud of the stuff I did, though. Just let's get that all right, straight. Right, right. right. Right, right. That's know. okay. You're but, not proud of it, but it's pretty cool. But listen, <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it very cool. And I mean, you've you've learned from it. Obviously, you rehabilitated. But when you, jewelry uh, robberies, did you were they armed robberies or did, were they like you just stuffing stuff in your pockets? No, no, Bernie. I robbed fifteen to eighteen million in diamonds all over the country. Uh, over twenty, over twenty stores. But did you like r- no. roll in with a sawed off oh, no. shotgun? Oh, went in, right? Took everybody down. I tied up. Oh my god! 20, <laughs> 25, 30 people in my wow. forty people. Tied them. A one robbery. I, the people keep coming in. I'm tying them up. Oh my I ran god. out of the flex. Cuffs. All by yourself. You went out of the club. No, no. I had a whole crew. You had but, a whole crew, but okay. none of my crew went to jail. Uh, I just forgot their names and, right. and a bunch of the guys. <laughs> yeah. so, I, mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, right. I was the only one who went away on a RICO alone. How's that? Well, that, that's because that you're not a writer. Well, a good I, man. I, I didn't but, rat. But before you get to, to what you did, 18 million was about what you robbed overall, which is the biggest ever funny. Uh, I uh, am crime still thing. known as the biggest. The biggest one ever. States. What was the most amount of cash you ever had on you at one point? Well, I had over a million dollars in cash. 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 Yeah. Mil- about a million four. <laughs> Close to a million five in cash. I used to collect bags, though. I used to collect bags of three, four hundred thousand, like nothing. I'd go to Little Italy. I had my vodka rigatoni, yeah. the Impositanos, yeah. uh, Fratellis, the guys over there. But, 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 so, so when you robbed these stores, though, the, who paid you? The, the crime family, or you had to go sell it yourself? The other no, 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 no. I had it. I got rid of my stuff within 24 hours. Okay. I had a fence. I forgot his name, and I don't know who he is. So, you know, yeah. I had a hey, fence you know, that, 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 yeah, you know, you get a little bit, when you get a little older, yeah, right. Bernie, you know, yeah. you know, hey, Bernie, you're smoke, my age. Smoke a little weed, and the next thing, things fly out of your head. Yeah. Can I tell well, you? You know, it's funny, because now in my program, uh, known as the best program, we have the number one program in the United States helping young people stay out of prison and realizing this life is not the life to live. Because... Trust me, I lived a great life. I had homes, horses, ho- uh, horses. Believe me, here's a Brooklyn guy for with two horses. Bronx, Brooklyn, I have two horses. That's a great story, son, I'll tell you. So, but all of it's not worth it. You know, I went to prison. My son was six years old. I got out, he was 18. My daughter was 15 months old. I got out, she was 13. And don't get me wrong, guys. I, I don't feel bad for me. I was a bad guy. Trust me, I did a lot of bad things. Right. But it hurts. That's what kills you. It's not the money. It's not the, you know, the fame. And You and robbed your family, essentially, is what it, you're saying. It, exactly, Bernie. And I wanted to let people know, yeah, you know, it's all cool until you're sitting in a prison cell. And that helping people is all BS. <laughs> right. You know, oh, they're going to help you. That, that, that's the way of the Godfather, you know, and they talk about that BS. So that, if, when you get down to it, guys, it, yeah. it's not the life to live. No. But don't get, we're going to have some great stories. No, so, but, but, and, and speaking but, but, of which, with uh, the no, book and all prison that. Story, he did, I did ask him. Just want to say who he is, Larry Lawton. Yeah. He's a if motivational you Google speaker. my name. Larry. Former former Gambino crime family member. Uh, associate, uh, Jewelry yeah. thief, uh, the bit, most famous jewelry thief uh, alive today, I would say. Yeah. I'm, the, I'm an analyst for uh, CNN, MSNBC, right. Fox. I do all their stuff. Whenever there's a robbery or there's any kind of uh, major robs like Kim Kardashian. Man. 
Kardashian. I was you know, on. I was even on the Australian Today Show. How about that? Where Kim Kardashian was Rob. Well, By the book, Gangster Redemption, him and Colin Beck. It's a story about his life. It's great. It's a great book. So, and Bernie were like this. So, you went away for about 13 years. He well, just I went away for 12. I had four 12-year 12. 12 okay. sentences. Okay. And you beat a life sentence. I beat and it. Wow. Now you're a great father. You're, you're close to your kids now. I'll be talking about missing the kids. Uh, but I, I, my first time I interviewed you, I said to you, I, I used to love that show, Oz. I love that show. I don't know. And, and the guys would go to prison, and what they would do to these guys in prison, I used to say to my wife, it can only happen on television. So I asked you, I said, when you were, did you get raped? Did you, did you rape? You didn't rape anybody. No. Uh, but you, you said that they did try, right? I mean. Well, well, you know, that's great. You know, I was strapped down naked, beaten and tortured by guards. I was in a hole for three years, 11 straight months, in the hole by guards, all documented. One guard took out his penis and peed on my face. Oh, my God. Spit on my face. These are all true stories. That costs a, it's lot, in of money the book. That costs a lot of money but, in the village, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we're back in New York. I mean, you can pretty much say, but that, that's all that's true. That's Saturday night at Bill Evans' house. <laughs> Our weather well, guy. The, we're, we're in trouble. I got to move back to New York. No, but what, so, but, well, what did you do to, to, to uh, piss off the guards? You know, I fought prison abuse. I ended up becoming, I ended up getting a law degree. I can't be a lawyer. I got the credits to be a lawyer. Right, right. But because obviously I'm a convicted felon. I was very good with the law, Bernie. I actually won a case in the Supreme Court. I won search rates. It's what they call when you get something into the Supreme Court. It's remanded back to an 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. I did the law so well. I won what they call ineffective assistance account, 2255s. Won on my case. I did a lot of good law work. Well, I was fighting the abuses going on by guards. What, what Sid said is so true. What goes on in prison... The regular person has no clue, and I'm here to try to help it, and that's, like you said earlier, I'm the only ex-con in the United States who's a sworn police officer, and I'm the only ex-con, listen to this one, who was recognized on the floor of the United States Congress up no in kidding. Washington, D.C., only one for fighting, uh, uh, helping teens and young people, and also helping police agencies try to connect with the community, because they're missing the boat a lot. Now, we can get into that in another show, but, you know, what happens now is... what. Well, you know, we're talking, we really need to be more proactive with our policing. We need to be more proactive with our parenting. And obviously, I try to help people because if you want to see what happens when a man messes up, come see me. Smart, intelligent, got my law degree, did a lot. But what you get back to your one quick question is, why did they do it? The prison system was killing friends of mine. They killed three of my friends. You can look up an article, anybody out there, they can look up an article. You type Larry Law, and you'll see an article called uh, uh, on I'll get it for the name. You just type my name as a zillion things. And it's even in my book. The prison killed three of my friends. One right. guy had heart, heart problems, guys. Arms coming down, radiating, everything happening to him. Goes to the medical. They say, get out of here. Even the prison guard he works for in what they call CMS. Mm -hmm. He goes to CMS. The guy says, go home. He says, go back to the medical. You're really in bad shape. He goes to the medical. They say to him, you got gas. They give him Maalox, Bernie. They walks back to the prison cell. He says to a buddy I'm with, Jimmy Brown, he says, Jimmy, I'm dying. He sits in, we sit him in a chair. He falls over, keels over. And if you guys never seen a man die, I've seen many. When a man dies, they defecate themselves and yeah. urinate. That's yeah. the first wow. thing that happens. Well, he dies and we're, we're trying to help him. The guards are screaming at us, lockdown, get, get in your cell, lockdown. Well, we get locked in a the cell. They put him on the cart. And I watched this with my own eyes. They put them on the cart and they're laughing about it going up to the, going up to the medical. They knock up to every one of our doors in prison to interview us. One guard says, well, you saw him hit his head, right? Yeah. I said, F wow. you, you hit his head. You killed that man as quick wow. as somebody stabbing that man. He left your medical 100 yards away 10 minutes ago. You killed that man. Wow. That, they, they left me, Bernie, in a hole. They were trying to break me. They used to abuse me. I've been concussion grenaded. I've been maced. I've been shocked. I mean, in a prison cell. I started going crazy, and that's the truth. People go crazy. You're in a hole for 11 straight months. You start going crazy. Sure. How I'm somewhat normal. Well, <laughs> I don't know how yeah. normal I am. Uh, you're all right. But you're you know right. what I mean, Bernie. I, 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 look at Considering. My, you know, I look at my life in a different light. I could take everything that happened to me from being abused as a kid to being uh, in prison, being really abused. To say, and I could take them as negatives and, and owe me life. I take all my experiences and make myself tougher for them and also teach others. That's, that's why my program has the great success it does. That's you know, I'm not telling a person what to do. I tell them, listen, you do this, this is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Hey, have a life. You do this, it's tough. Talk about what 
Sid and I got along because we're both uh, workout guys. You know, when I was in prison, I, I got some pictures. I mean, I was in a, a sick shape. I used to do 1,000 push-ups, 1,000 crunches in 45 minutes. You're still in great shape, by well, the way. Well, now I'm doing it. Now I got to be, like, the, the other day I did 500 push-ups in an hour. You know, I'm, I, I'm, I got, I got to get up there. But I'm 55 now. That's great. You know? Yeah, God bless you. That's great. You know, it's, it's about, you know, it's speed and working yeah. out and how you do that. But it, it, we need... And we'll tell stories because I can bring the story into why we need to make the changes we make. You know, everybody I know who, who messes up, and I know you got to take a break. Just stop me, guys. No, we got five no, minutes. Got about five minutes. But everything we do and how, how we have to try to do it, when kids see, the kids see about the tattoos on my arms, you, like you asked Bernie. Yes. And they, how you they, make they, them. He's got a, uh, sleeve uh, tattoos uh, uh, made, tattoo made in body. prison. Made yeah. in prison. In prison, Bernie. And, and Sid, you know this. They're made with a guitar string as a needle. Yeah. We'd steal a, a, a motor off of a, a typewriter, and we'd take a pen. To tell your audience, you take a toothbrush, you heat it, you bend it, and it now looks like an L. Yeah. You take the barrel of a pen, you tape that to one part of it, you take the motor off of a pencil sharpener you steal or a typewriter we stole, put that on the end, you, you file down a guitar string, go through the pencil, Connected to the little motor thing with a little oh, piece geez. of a pencil, Jeez. and the ink we made, Ernie, was either melted chess pieces oh. or black guys. We would take the grease they sell on the commissary. Black guys have hair grease. You'd burn that grease. Black soot would come up. We'd catch that soot on loose leaf. Oh my God, put that in the water like scientists. Well, we're, we're MacGyver's in prison. Unbelievable. Look at this. I can make a rope out of my underwear in a little <laughs> you know? cord that can hang you. <laughs> If only you didn't. I don't want to get too serious. I can tell some funny stories of guys in, in acid. I was with the. I was with the number. I was in federal prison. I was in a maximum security prison, the worst prison in the country. And by the way, they say that uh, people usually think of federal prisons as uh, you know cake joints, easy cake cakewalk uh, joints, well, as compared to state. Prisons. I was just yeah. going to go there. You Not know, anybody country been, clubs. Yeah, absolutely, what you yeah. just said anybody who knows anything about prisons and, and guys who've been to both, and I have been to both, state and fed. There's no comparison when it comes to the feds because the feds maximum security. We're not talking camps where a guy goes for three months for right. tax stuff. We're talking maximum security. Not where Ivan Bosky went, where John Gotti went. Right. I was with Nikki Scarfo, yeah. Vic Arena, Patty Amato, Vic Amuso, all bosses of families. Yeah. We were all in the same prison together in Atlanta, USP Atlanta. Put it this way, Bernie. We had a murder a month for 18 <laughs> months. Not counting overdoses, not yeah. counting suicides. Or suspected wow. suicide. So, yeah, so that a murder a month. That, and the USP Atlanta was the worst prison in the country. Yeah, I was on Con Air sixteen times. Wow, you know the plane that transfers yeah, the prison. Of course, yeah, the, the, movie, the, the movie, the movie. Hey, yeah. I was Listen, on Con Air. I, we, you know, the only time I watch MSNBC is when they, sh- they have the uh, lockup show. All oh, those are great it's, shows. It's compelling. It, uh, but can I tell you, it's fake. Is it, it, like Goodfellas, for example, they were, they were making lobsters, what, they're drinking wine, they're banging boards. Nah, was that you? You know, you know, I laugh. We did make pasta. It was in a bowl <laughs> with a stinger. I used to make pasta, and I, we'd steal pasta out of the kitchen, yeah. and I could make pasta in a big bowl. But what you said, you know, that show Lock Up. I was asked years ago to be the consultant on that and the voice of Lock Up. Yeah. Oh, really? And I, was, I actually did a pilot on helping kids. It's a great pilot. It's called Lawton's Law. Great pilot. Anyway... So they were doing that show, and they asked me. And I went in there, and I says, okay, let's do something. Let's tell the truth, what's really going on. And not just from your end. He, the guy said straight up, we can't do that. <laughs> he goes, you know why? He goes, the prison won't let us in there. Right. They right. don't show when the guards don't feed you. You know, they, they put you in a cell with a shower. Yeah. But yeah. they don't tell you the guards will turn the shower, cold water off, and it'll be boiling. Why I you didn't in there? care, Bernie, or, or, or Sid. I didn't care when they shut the hot water on off and it was freezing. I'm right. Like, but the, my, but my the pecker burning got wa- small. The I burning water can kill that. you, though. You, you, can't, you can't take a shower. Right. You, right. I didn't take a shower Bastards. for 14 days. Don't, here's worse. The sh- toilets are suction. They'll shut them off. They'll come to your say and say, beg me to put it on. F you, blah, blah. Beg me. Two days later, you have to defecate. You yeah. have to pee. Sure. You will beg. I begged a man to put the toilet on. And I'm telling you. Because the duty was all over the floor. I'm getting, my, I'm getting is, Bernie. I'm getting This is wor- worse than Guantanamo. Uh, worse. I'm not kidding. I, yeah. compared, I compared in an article. This is why they put me in, in the hole. I compared the prison I was at to Abu Ghraib. Yeah, in yeah. prison. Right. If you write that Abu Ghraib, Larry Lawton, you'll see an article, and they had a guy with no legs. And I know you got to, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. just cut through. But no, we can well, be here say, forever. You yeah. know, we will. You, you have to hook up with uh, Bernie Carrick, who who calls for reform in the uh, federal prison system well, as well. He's a former NYPD. I know, commissioner. I know him, and he only did that after he went. I wish some guys would come talk to guys like myself while they're out, and they still have that position 
to yeah, change it. Right. They want to. Poor Bernie went to prison. Obviously, made his mistake. And I, I love people who come out and, and change their lives, no matter what. We all, yeah. everybody in this room, could have been in prison. Let's let's. Well, get that I, I have been, but that's oh, a, no. it's another go. story. Well, he, did, he did sixteen actually. Sixteen love, years. Yes. Eleven yeah. worked. Yeah. Jeez, okay. you know, I know you look familiar. <laughs> no, actually, it was, it was up. In, it was Coxsackie up in New York. <laughs> Yeah. You guys like to say that. I think you guys are off the charts. But, but listen, I, love but before, I do love you. We're yeah. going to bring you back because you're great. And, uh, and I told Brian you would love We didn't even touch on stories. We've got a million reason. things to do. But, but for today, I do want you to tell folks, have about two minutes, uh, what you're doing today with the kids, your program, uh, uh, the best program in the country. You're doing an amazing job. Tell the folks all about it. You know that. what? We have a program. It's called the Reality Check Program. The Reality Check Program works with kids uh, and teens and adults. I've, I deal with 25, 30-year-olds because, let's face it, a 22-year-old so is still a kid, obviously, in sure. our age. I work with all ages. We have the number one program that anybody can go online and just type in Reality Check Program, and it'll, they'll find a Reality Check Program or my name, Larry Lawton. Everything pops up. And we, have, we also work with police. I hope some police are listening because we work with police agencies, and we have the number one program helping police connect with a community. Who better... We've, we have these video cards that these cops give out, and they connect with the community, and it has such high – we got judges and police chiefs all talking about it because it's – we're connecting the police with an ex-con. Not just talk. We have an actual way the cops give something out. I really hope some cops get – because we – I want – I hate to see cops get killed. I hate – you know when a person tells me, hey, Larry, I hate the cops. I said, hold on. If your house is robbed, you call 911 or 411. Yeah. Bingo. You call 911. Bingo. Of course. Uh, in that regard, we need cops. But we need cop <clears throat> good cops. Yes. So we also need to take these cops and, and have them give out. Stop buying more crap. I'll, we got these video cards that are off the charts. I'm going to give you guys some. Matter of fact, today I brought cards for you guys. Oh, cool. La- so you're going to see them. Larry Lawton, a uh, great guy, former Gambino family member, uh, but Associate. to turn motivational speaker and uh, uh, working with the community now. Oh, every day. Larry Lawton, and the, the name of the book is? Gangster Redemption. Gangster Redemption. We'll have you back. Thank you, Larry. Fascinating Excellent character. Job. Larry Thanks Lawton, for appearing baby. here on the Bernie and Thank Sit you, show. Bernie. We'll, yeah. we'll talk Thank to you again yeah. very show. soon. Always welcome here. Back after this. Thank you. Call out the BS. Not everybody is consistent as you and I am. Follow Bernie and Sid on Twitter right now at Bernie and Sid. The Bernie and Sid Show. Guaranteed to be enormously successful. It's about truth, the damn truth. New York's truth, the truth behind the BS. For New York, nothing at all in between. This is Bernard McGurk. Bernard McGurk. So Bernie. This is Sid Rosenberg. The one and only Sid. Live, local, on it. You never know what's going to happen. Exclusively. What is this? 77 WABC. Woo! I don't think anybody knows it was Russia that broke into the DNC. She's saying Russia, 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 but I don't, maybe it was. I mean, it could be Russia, but it could also be China. It could also be lots of other people. It also could be somebody sitting on their bed that weighs 400 pounds, okay? Why do you think the president-elect still refuses to accept that the Russians were involved? He says it could have been the Iranians, it could have been some guy in New Jersey. Well, uh, the Iranians are hacking into our systems. If it's a 400-pound guy, it was a 400-pound Russian guy. (laughs) <laughs> Always the wag. Uh, it's Senator Lindsey Graham back on the Bernie and Sid show on 77 WABC. And uh, this whole uh, Russian hacking thing is uh, dominating all the news, uh, eclipsing uh, everything else, at least on cable news. Yeah, it's everywhere. Uh, in fact, right now it's on Clinton. Putin grudge led to Russian election hacks. We talked about that, how she uh, Hillary came out in 2011, was very tough on Putin, but... It's everywhere. It's um, and the Russians are saying, much. saying, "Yo, prove it, pals." And, right. And Peter King was saying yesterday, "Hey, you're leaking to the Washington Post and the New York Times. Come talk to us. Tell us what's going on." He says there's no proof. He thinks it's uh, they're, they're trying to just I don't a smear. I don't. I think it, I think a hundred. Like, you're going to put a past Putin and the Russians all of a sudden they're decent people. Come on. I, listen, I understand. I one thousand percent in my heart believe it did happen. It just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, there's no reason not to believe it. It's not like they're not uh, who knows bad it, it, people. There was there was this guy called the Guccifer out there, or well, some Romanian guy. Sure. There were there were other people. Out there. there were other actors. Uh, yeah. uh, Judge Napolitano, a guy you respect. You yeah, know what he but thinks. He's you know his tank thing? too. But in other words, it could be anybody. It could be. And and but the point to your point, 
It doesn't matter. That's at my this point. point. I and do it, believe it's Putin. I do believe it's Russia. But what's the difference now? And, and you should have, as uh, has been pointed out, you should have, if you wanted to investigate and were so uh, uh, offended by it and uh, affronted and all this nonsense, you should have went after him last uh, summer, or last fall. But you said it best this morning, and I'm saying you're right. They thought they were going to win. So they didn't bother with right. it. Right. So now that they lost, so they, now, have, they have no credibility. Of course not. Hey, Bo Deedle. Our good, our good friend Bo Deedle, uh, following a, a great appearance by Larry Lawton. They remind me uh, of each other kind of a little bit, don't they? Larry yes. and Bo. See you, Larry. Larry. In other words, uh, there but for the grace of God goes Bo Deedle. Right. I mean, uh, Larry went that way. Bo grew up in, uh, I think, South Ozone Park. And uh, he, he, he landed on the right side of the tracks uh, eventually. But Bo Deedle, good morning, Bo. Hey, come on, my favorite guys. What's happening? The, How are you, the buddy? Next, the next mayor of New York City. You're on page yeah, page six I, this morning. Hey, I was just on last night with that guy Earl from New York One for about 15 minutes, and I didn't realize that his dad uh, was a deputy inspector with the police department. We had wow. Great. We had a great 15-minute uh, uh, conversation while I'm running. You mean Errol Lewis? Yeah, yeah. His yeah, dad was uh, was a, was a car. Uh, uh, New York City inspector in the next precinct next to me in Brooklyn when I was a homicide detective, and he said uh, it was quite the gentleman with me, and I I got a lot of respect for the man. You know, I'm uh, you know I didn't know it was going to be good or bad, but it was great. Well, not even good or bad, it was great. Uh, and he's he's quite a gentleman, and he he got where I'm coming from with some of the aspects of what I want to do. And hey, <laughs> De Blasio, hey, this is the first. You know what I get really upset about, guys? I'm out there struggling. I'm for two, three hours a day. I'm making phone calls, raising money the way you're supposed to raise money. And this creep puts together an LLC, some Fugazi corporation where they put hundreds of thousands of dollars, pay for play crap. Hey, this guy's going to jail because that's criminal, man. And you know what? He know all about it, and he's got a face for music. And New York City doesn't need a corrupt guy. This is not the Gambino or the Genovese family where you pay to play. No, 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 no. The people in New York have to have a person who's not a politician, a person that cares about every kid, this little Zaire Perkins and every other kid that, that is being beat to death. We got to care about the homeless. We got to care about people. We got to help people on the, if they help them get subsidies on the MTA, if they're working every day, making under 20000 let's subsidize some of these people that go to work every day. Let's stop worrying about subsidizing people who are mm -hmm. You tell them, yeah. We, we, there's a lot of issues, my sons, and I tell you what, I am really, really excited. And, the, and then I came up with that thing about uh, waiving the two-year college degree for, yeah. uh, for, for young kids in our inner cities to become cops and veterans, of course, and bring them on with a five-year contract to continue to school at night. There's so many good that's things a great idea. in the city, man. So, I hadn't heard that before. Uh, that, that's a you fantastic know, I'll tell you something, Bo. I, um, and, and I learned the hard way, and I admit it, I was wrong, but... I used to think that corruption was just a part of politics and that people would just accept it. I, I thought Hillary Clinton would win despite the immense amount of corruption that was uncovered during her run. I still thought she would win, and I was proven incorrect. So every single day when I pick up the New York Daily News or any other uh, paper in town, and I see the headline, Bill de Blasio doing something else corrupt, and uh, they're going after him, I've now come to the conclusion that people really do care, and that something like this can, in fact, derail a guy like him and promote a guy like you. You know, it just was funny. A lawyer called me up, and then a, a, a Scott Stringer's office called up this attorney friend of mine, and he says, oh, well, you could do business for the city, but you got to contact this fundraising group. First. i got you know, I, I to take the top off this ball. I'm going to expose everybody. I am going to run as a corruption-free mayor, and I'm going to run for the people. I don't want these union executives that are in the bag with them. You know what? Let them go their own way. I want the people of New York to understand why I'm running. It ain't for money. It ain't for my ego. I love this city. I bled for this city. I want to make this city the great place it should be, corruption free. You want to? You want to give me money for my campaign? Thank you. And you're giving it for a good mayor. If you want something done, I'll look at it. If it's feasible for the city and it's the right thing and it's, it's it, it, and it, it could really work, I'll look at it. But I'm not. You're not giving me money and then expecting me to do something. Cause don't give me the money then. You know, I'm gonna tell you right now. One more, both from mayor.com for me. I can jump in. BofferMayor.com. You do love this city. You serve this city uh, in great fashion for so many years, keeping all of us safe. 
Uh, I know you always wanted to run for public office, but is this the time, Bo, because not only do you love this city, but because this guy is so corrupt and so bad I, that you feel yeah, like you have to do something about it? You're hitting the nail on the head, Sid. Bingo. First of all, I really, you know, I'm 66 years old. This was not my thing. My kid, got, my son, Bo, got robbed four months ago. That I added into it. Then seeing this corruption and all that. And you know what? But all these politicians are all rather the same. Everybody's in there. It's, it's all politics. I am not a politician. And I didn't really want to run for anything, Sid. Now I really feel as though i got to take this guy out because he's so corrupt. I will not stand by and let him. He wants to be the first progressive president of the United States. Well, let him start because let's not reelect this bum. He hasn't done anything. All he did was divide the police with the inner city communities. And he's a, he speaks very well. Like I said, he was at the Powell, the police athletic lead lunch, and he wouldn't even look at me. He speaks very articulate, very well. But you know what? I uh, don't speak as well as him. But you know what the difference between me and him? He lies. I don't. Right. No, it's him speaking well is uh, like lipstick on a pig. And he is a mutt, this guy. Uh, so for people who don't know, Bo Deedle is a confirmed registered candidate, challenging a Democratic candidate challenging Bolshevik Bill de Blasio, the cop hater, who, by the way, uh, Bo, uh, this, uh, this hoax that was exposed by the Muslim girl where yeah. Bill de Blasio blamed Donald Trump. <laughs> he is, he essentially was ass clown Al Sharpton to to uh, uh, Tawana Brawley. Uh, uh, Bill De Blasio was to this girl. It's analogous to that, yeah. and it turns out now that it was a hoax. It never happened, and he was I, blaming Donald Trump for it. I know. You know what the problem here is? We I got to appeal to the people. The people that get up every day. The people got to go to work every day. Not like this bum that gets up and starts his day at eleven o'clock in the after in the morning. That's when his day. He's lazy, yeah. and we got to get rid of this bum. And you want to know something? Honestly, if there was a real viable candidate that we f- I felt as though was real viable, I would support him. But there's nobody. I mean, this guy looks like the Pillsbury Doughboy Stringer. You know, puff the magic bread. I mean, he's got no. No, no bulls attention. How can he be no. leading a city? You got to have someone that's going to be strong, either a man or a woman that's going to be strong and take on everything. And that's what it is. It's a fight. It's a fight. Now, and you got to be in the fight. And you, uh, Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York State, here he hates uh, Bill De Blasio as well. And you had he was at that luncheon with you the other day. Do you, do you see him uh, endorsing Bo Dietl? You know, he's a no, fellow. No, no, he wasn't at the luncheon. He wasn't. Oh, at he temple. wasn't. No, it's Casamitis. I was at a Christmas party with him, and I, I went over to him, and I said to him, you know, I know his dad very well. I knew his dad very well, and I, I really love the uh, governor very much. I really respect the governor very much and his family. And I said to him, I had my, one of my Bo Deedle pins, and I was yeah. going to pin it on his jacket. And, and he goes, he's put it in my hand. <laughs> yeah. I, I understand that, because it's a very, very, you know, I mean, he's still trying to deal with the Blasi. All of a sudden, if, if the governor's... So quickly, I said, yeah, you know what I'm interested in? I'm interested in the woman, the independent woman, woman party line that you have, Governor, and I'd like to be considered, I'd like to a year. And he says, sure, Bo, and I'm going to talk to him about it because I want to run as many lines as I can to give people an opportunity to vote for me any way you want. I am not a politician. I hate these political labels and all that. I am more liberal in some senses where I want where I want." people to be helped as far as when they go to work every day, help them with the mass transit when they're paying $120 a month. Let's help them with that so this way we can we can be part of helping people with the homeless. This guy's done nothing, man. Right. It's getting cold out there. This guy's done nothing. And I got some really unique ideas, so that's going to be it. So. And his, by the way, his real name is Wilhelm Goebbels. Yeah. Just let's not everybody yeah. forget that. Bo, yeah. Diedel, Bo Diedel, the next mayor of New York City, uh, uh, he... Okay. You are a certified, bona fide, established candidate in the race for mayor. You're going to take this uh, corrupt mayor out. Yeah. And, uh, You're going to win, Bo. You know what? I'm going to put it this way, guys. It's going to be like when, when Bernie fought you, said. Oh. I'm, I'm going to draw blood. I'm going to draw blood. <laughs> hey, hey, Bo. I love you guys. All, I love, love you, guys. you, too. All the hey, love, let man. Let me tell you something. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, everything else. I want to wish everybody, all your listeners, because everybody loves you guys. I want God to bless everybody in this great yes. city, this great country. You it's a too, beautiful buddy. thing. Thank Group Thanks, Bo Deedle, the next mayor here on the Bernie and Sid Show, 1-800-848-9222. We will speak to Holly Holm 
next half hour. But in the meantime, we're going to go to the phones after this. Bernie and Sid, two brains, one show. Guaranteed to be enormously successful. 77 WABC. Oh, yeah. Back on the Burning Sid Show on 77 WABC on this festive Friday before Christmas week. And, uh, yeah, we were just talking to Bo Dito. Speaking of festive Fridays, uh, you uh, and, and de Blasio and all this, you, you're coming up uh, from the subway this morning, Madison, uh, excuse me, Penn Station. Yeah. And, uh, well, the homeless thing around here, uh, especially when it gets cold. You, 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 first of all, Penn Station is like uh, something out of Calcutta, India. It's, it's like, it's, it's just an, un, an abominable it's disgusting. Uh, transit facility. It's disgusting. And, uh, and, and, and I take it personally as a New Yorker because I know that people come there day in and day out. They travel from here to go to other destinations. And I know it's early in the morning. It's still no excuse. And I go down that escalator at 4.30 a.m. or 4.15 a.m. to get my Dunkin' Donuts coffee. And I see people asleep on the stairs. People asleep on the escalator, hands down their Pants, ass is hanging out, drunk yeah. and high, and every time I try to walk two feet, somebody asks me for a dollar. It's enough. It's it, it is, and and it sounds sort of callous, maybe. But I don't care. Uh, I don't care. They they should they don't belong there. No, right? another, another failing of uh, Bolshevik Bill De Blasio. And by the way, to get there to see them, and you know this, Bernard, because you see it every day. To get there to see them, I got to walk down Sixth Avenue, getting out the train on Thirty Second Street, the B train, and walk the streets at four a.m. Lined. You don't see this in the daytime. Lined with homeless yeah. sleeping on the street. Right, right. No, it's amazing. I got to step over bodies to get the Penn Station Major where I get problem. harassed. And, and and again, these people that are out there, they're, they're they're there because they made bad choices in their life, bad behavior, mm. and some of it mental illness, drugs, and men- mental some, illness. Hey, listen, some of those guys too fought for this country. But it's not even about that because I got to be honest. Because of the situation, I'm less and less sympathetic towards but, their cause and more upset and annoyed. Well, listen, if you're downstairs at the CVS and in the checkout counter, Dwayne Reed, Dwayne Reed or whatever the hell it is, uh, which ad- uh, adjacent to a Penn Station uh, f- a thoroughfare hallway, whatever, and you got these homeless people, you got the cash in your hands and they're right up in your mush asking you for it, or, or even if you're just walking, as you say, they're asking you for a dollar or whatever it is. You give some, I, I, oftentimes I give some money. So do to, I. I got you talk all the time. You can't give to everybody. And, yeah. So then when you, you walk past them, you walk away and you hear... God bless you. Uh, you know, Merry right. Christmas. In other words, F you. you, yeah. you know, they make you feel like a piece of garbage. Exactly because, right. Like, what, do we, what do you want from me? I feel bad, too. The PLJ girls, like Lexi, she goes down there in the morning. She, you know, she comes in with uh, buy Dunkin' Donuts for, like, uh, Todd Pettengill and uh, Jade. You know, yeah. The, and uh, they, get, they, get they lay her out of the yeah. hassle. Yeah. And, I, and I'm like a bodyguard. I'm going to punch somebody out. And some, it's just some gross, of them down there, uh, you know, uh, 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 masturbating uh, you know, Bro, in public. It's nasty. You're not joking. No, I'm not. The guys are on the, their hands are down their pants. Yeah, on on the steps. It's it's when the cops are and I've gone. To, I swear I've gone to the cops, but on I go. Listen, I know it's uh, they're wearing terrorism jackets. I know you're more worried about somebody walking in into the Long Island Railroad with the, a bomb. It's, it's not, not your thing, job, no. but but can we do something about this guy? Yeah, they, you know what he said to me? I swear to God, he goes, it's disgusting. And then you turn around and there's nothing they can. Well, what can they do? I guess when, 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 when you got a bomb, shoot him. When you got. <laughs> <laughs> Kick them off the stairs. I, I hate to sound callous, but come on, it's you, my city. When you, when you have a bum in City Hall, I guess this is the result. You have bums in Penn Station. You know what you just said? You know what you just said? You're brilliant. Because the homeless guy downstairs at Penn Station, who I just killed the last five minutes, I respect that guy more than Bill de Blasio. Yes, bottom line. This is a bum that, that, that gets paid. That gets paid a well. A bum in a nice suit. And as, as uh, Bo Deedle said, he sleeps till 11 o'clock and does squat. And he's a corrupt uh, piece of piece POS. Bernie and Sid, uh, we're going to speak to the uh, UFC fighter Holly Holm after knowing with the news. Bernie and Sid on demand. You never know what's going to happen. The WABC radio app. Download it now. Upload the BS. 77 WABC. She's hot. She's hot. She's hot. She's hot. Back in the Bernie and Sid Show on 77 WABC. 
We have on the line with us Holly Holm. Just quickly before I get to that, Kimberly Guilfoyle will not take the job as press secretary for Donald Trump. Listen, I said no that too. No way in hell. But why is she taking a third meeting? Because third. they just want to hang out. Who knows? Is that but what it is? Chris Brown will be the president of the <laughs> National Organization for Women. <laughs> Gary Busey will run the VA. All right. The Veterans Administration right. before Kimberly I, I, Guilfoyle I, I, is not going to. That job is it pays crap, and it, you, you, eighteen hours a day. Monica Crowley just took a job with Trump. That's the, the different job. That's true. Different well, job. I, I, anyway. I did. I did text her just to see what she says. Anyway, okay. I, I agree with you. I do, but it is interesting that she's got three meetings. So but the, I agree with you. On the line with us right now, she Holly Holm will be the uh, press secretary before. Maybe she Kimberly, will. Kimberly Guilfoyle is not leaving. Actually, Fox. Uh, Holly Holm should, should get a win at Barclays in Brooklyn. And then hang it up and go work for Donald Trump. <laughs> She's on the phone with us right now. Holly Holm has just agreed to fight, it, at, as Sid mentioned, at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn on February yes, 11th. My hometown. She's fighting a woman named, uh, I can't even pronounce it, something Durandame. Uh, anyway, at, at 145 pounds. Holly Holm, welcome back. or at, Welcome to the Bernie Thank and you. Sid Show. Good morning. Thank you. How are you guys? Uh, we could good. be a lot worse. Always good on Friday, uh, you know, the week before Christmas week. And, uh, hey. and See, we, we started this show, Holly, just so you know, not long after. I, I was working in Florida for many, many years. I worked with Bernie 15 years ago. I got fired in controversial fashion, and I was excommunicated <laughs> to Florida for 10 years. So I got back, like, right after you were in studio with Bernard. So I didn't have a chance to meet you. Uh, but I will tell you that to this day, he still raves about how great you are and beautiful and no, fun well, and listen, smart and the whole thing. And, and, and a, well, you got us sweet. Just know it. <laughs> A tremendous fighter. Yes. I mean, she knocked out Ronda Rousey. I mean, the, the you know nobody was going to beat Ronda Rousey. True. And Holly Holm did it in dramatic fashion. And uh, so, you, congrats. That was a bantamweight you. fight. You you won the belt. That was a bantamweight uh, belt that you won. And now, and then, it, it, since then, uh, you you could have waited. You could have waited to fight a, a rematch with uh, Ronda Rousey, and you would would have made millions. Instead, you said, "No, listen, I'm a fighter. She's hurt. I'm going to fight." And you ended up losing to Misha Tate, even though you had been winning the fight, in my opinion. Misha Tate choked you out in the fifth round. And uh, were you devastated by that? Absolutely. Um, I mean, that's just, what what are you going to do? You can only try and come back. And that's what I'm trying to do now is learn from my two losses that I have under my belt right now. And, you know, going from on top of the world to getting choked out in front of everybody. Um, and by the way, let me just point out that Holly Holm got choked out. She didn't tap out. In other words, she 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 was getting choked, and you could mm-hmm. at, at any point tap out. Mm-hmm. She she actually went to sleep before she would tap out. Wow. Uh, so so you to know, your credit, God bless. Well, thank, I, in the fight, I kept thinking because she had me in a choke in uh, one of the other rounds, and I thought, you know, I got out of it before. I'll get out of it again. And then I was waking up. <laughs> it, was just wow. like, it was like that. It was like wow. going out in a dentist uh, seat, right? <laughs> you know what? It's and I think uh, I remember I had a conversation actually before I started MMA when I was just boxing. I was like, you know, I don't know how it would be in a fight. Like how far I would go before I would tap. I don't really know. And uh, I got to the gym. And I was like, well, we figured that one out. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> it, was, it was very dramatic. Yeah. Well, you said, but you, still could it be in our in our you know imagination what really would happen? Right. So well, that means that we wouldn't actually know that I didn't that, that you know I got choked out. But yeah. uh, I wish it was still a mystery. But hey, I guess but, that's when, when you it's, you watch the tape afterwards, no doubt you just saw yourself. Just your body, just you fall asleep. You your eyes limp, closed. You went yeah. limp, and yeah. Uh, but listen, you know, listen. You talked about how it was devastating for you. We know after you beat Rhonda that she like fell into this uh, this spiral of depression. She contemplated suicide. I think got that bad for her. Uh, not that bad for you, right? I mean, you took the loss. It sucks, but you took the loss in stride, and now you're coming back. Not that bad for you. Is it fair to say that? You know, it's just one of those things that I don't want to feel like I'm defeated by someone indefinitely, like forever. Right. I mean, it already sucks that I lost. I don't want. I don't want to. You know, like just live in that defeat for the rest of my life. Right. I think that's worse. Right. <laughs> and what, what, to add insult to injury, with that, I guess maybe is that Misha Tate ended up uh, retiring herself, so you'll never get a shot at her again. Do you care yeah, about I that? I would have loved that rematch, but you know what? Um, look at all the girls in the division. Look at all the. We have this whole new division now with the featherweight division, and there's so many opportunities that I don't I don't really want to look back. I right. want to learn from what what my past has been, but um, the future is bright. 
It is bright. And to you, is this a, a big deal? One of the ways you're going to market your fight, specifically Holly Holm, the great Holly Holm with me and Bernard here, uh, is the fact that you, along with McGregor, Penn, and Coach Hort, those are the only three other people in the sport to win two different uh, weight belts. Is that a big deal for you, that you, you could be the only woman or one of just four people ever to accomplish that feat? That, that's kind of a big deal. Yeah, you know, um, I'm excited that they have the faith in me to even be able to, you know, kind of, have this opportunity and and the the opportunity that they're giving me is just I want to make the most of it. Um, I I want to do things that haven't been done before. Really, for me, it's my motivation. I want to you know go over ground that's never been crossed before, and I would love to have a belt in two different weight divisions. I did it in boxing, and you know one of my goals from boxing going to MMA was to hold a world title in MMA as well because nobody's ever done that before. Mm. If they've been in boxing and held titles, they haven't been able to cross over and do it in MMA and vice versa. So I wanted to be the first person ever to be able to do that. Mm. And I did accomplish that, but I, I, and then I fall short, you know, my next fight and lose the belt. So I want to go back and do well, and I have this chance to fight for the one. And we're, we're, we're confident you will. It's going to be uh, the UFC 208 in Brooklyn, a uh, big night for Brooklyn, Saturday, February 11th at the Barclays Center. Uh, Holly Holm will fight this Dutch girl, uh, Jermaine uh, Duranda. I mean, she's probably a badass herself. But So it, 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 it means a move up in weight for you, 10 pounds from 135 to 145. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what, what, what is that? Uh, what do you pump more iron? Uh, you, you, you get to eat more donuts or what happens? How do you, you know, how do you, how do you prepare <laughs> you for that? What? I don't want to pump too much iron or I'm stiff and, you know, yeah. not light on my feet and I don't want to eat too many donuts because I don't want to want to die in round two. So <laughs> nice. I'm going to eat to train rather than eat for my, you know, weight. Uh, I want to be healthy. I want to be energetic and, but I want to eat good. I want my body to feel good. I want to get in there and feel um, you know, strong yet uh, light on my feet, and so I'm just going to keep a good balance for it. What do you usually um, weigh? If you're not fighting, what, what, what do you like to forget about what you usually weigh? As a woman, what do you like to weigh? Um, honestly, if I walk around at 155, I'm fine. Oh, okay, so then you're fine. Then you're good. Oh, that's okay. good. Yeah, that's good. Cool. And that's, I mean, I'm, I could make, I could make, uh, I could, I mean, if I walk at 155. You know, at the beginning of a training camp, yeah. going to 35 is fine. Yeah. Um, I could make 145 tomorrow. Tomorrow, right. So, See, but you but you got double the pressure, Holly, because, um, you know, you're, you're an a attractive woman. So, and they do sell you that way. Uh, so, and try to get new fans by, hey, take a look at Holly Holmes. So not only do you have to be, and you are, a great boxer, a great fighter, you're great at what you do, but you have to maintain some, some of that uh, beauty to the femininity because they are selling that. Is that, is that kind of a catch-22? You know, I feel like I just, I, I, really, I really love being a, a woman. I love being a girl, and I just, I am who I am, and so if that's how I'm seen, then great. So if, you know, if people see me as a woman that still loves to fight, that's that's great because that's me. I'm I'm proud to be a girl. I'm not trying to be anybody else, and I love my career, which is fighting. I'm not trying to do anything else right now. So, uh, however they, you know, come across with that, and uh, it's fine with me. And for, for the uninitiated, the uh, women in the UFC, f- the the fights are f- just absolutely exciting, fantastic, better than m- uh, men's boxing matches, in my opinion. You had that Polish girl, I forget her name. Yeah, no, f- oh, uh, yeah. unbelievable. Joanna. Right, Joanna, uh, fantastic. So and, uh, fun to watch. And Saturday night you have uh, a couple of uh, b- uh, very attractive women, Paige Van Zandt versus uh, the karate hottie, I forget her name. Michelle Watterson, she's my teammate. Watch out. She's going to be showing everybody what she can do. And Right, exactly. And, and, and But the fights are very, very exciting. They're good contests. And, and, and the women are extremely feminine, yet badass in the octagon. And Absolutely. as you are, which, I mean, that Ronda Rousey fight, and, and the Misha Tate fight as well, oh, which you were ahead in. Yep. And you, you ended up losing towards the end. But, uh, no, you guys are really good fighters who put a lot of Thank work you. into your craft. We did have a guy in here, though. I'm going to be completely honest with you, Holly. And, and uh, one of the, one of the, I'm not going to mention his name because we have a lot of the fighters in here. They happen to love me and Bernard. And he did say, and you can confirm, you can deny, that there's a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff going on between the male and female fighters in your sport. I don't really get involved in it. I don't really even, you know, for me, I have... Female and male teammates. We have a lot of fighters that are 
currently on the roster with the UFC, and we all support each other, male or female. Yes. Yeah, and and so, Holly's married. I know she's married. Come on. <laughs> so, yeah, so listen. And then, by the way, who cares? It's a free country who, who, <laughs> if there's some intramural. <laughs> what the hell? I mean, what, it's, you know, it's yeah, nothing it's... illegal about it. <laughs> no. But so, Holly Holm, listen, uh, we, we love you. We, we, yes. We're going to be rooting for you, UFC 208 Brooklyn at the Barclays Center, February 11th, Saturday. The event is uh, 10 o'clock on pay-per-view. Right before it's gonna... Valentine's Day. It's the Valentine's Day massacre coming up. Yes. How about that, Holly? Yes. Listen, before you uh, t- this fight goes down, we want you to come up in the studio and visit yeah. us uh, the week before and uh, talk to us or whatever, if you don't mind. All right. Okay. All right. So good luck to you, and thanks for appearing here on the Bernie. Merry Sitchin. Christmas and Happy New Year, Holly. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. You too. Thank you. All right, Hit him in the muscle. Care. Holly, Damn the right. preacher's daughter home on the Bernie and Sid Show. We're back after this. Bernie and Sid, 77 WABC. Going to wrap it up for uh, another great week on the Bernie and Sid Show. We will be here next week before Christmas and the New Year's. In fact, we've got some great guests stopping by, including live in studio Monday, Bernard, the very funny Gilbert Gottfried. Affleck! <laughs> on the Bernie and Sid Show. Yes, we will be here with some kick-ass shows. Uh, but the, leading up to Christmas is what we're doing. Because we, right. we love the peeps. Oh, I love you. And Curtis and Kobe are coming up. I love you too, my brother. I'm fond of them, but I love you. Oh, shucks. <laughs> so Say that to all the fellas.